Waiting for the live stream to pick up here. All right. We are live. This is Robert Plank from WWHW Book. I'm narrating an audiobook today. It's Sunday, which is a great time to catch up on all those nooks and crannies, all those little things that you know that you need to do. And I want to show you a little bit about what I have going on. Uh, I have my, my book in front of me. I'll be narrating the final chapter, I think. And I'll be narrating it so that way I can sell my book, not just on Amazon, Kindle, Digital, which is the, the downloadable version of the book, not just on Kindle Paperback, which is the hold in your hand, flip through the pages kind of book, but also on audible.com. But a, a bonus, an advantage to you narrating your book is you'll find all the little tiny typos, all the little nooks and crannies that you know you left in that maybe there's only one every five pages and you keep going through pass after pass of reading the book, showing your friends, and you just can't find all those. But when you narrate your book, when you speak it out, when you focus on every single word, as long as you don't overthink it, you'll find all of those uh, those little things to fix. And so give me a second here. I'm going to uh, send a link to this to my email list. You keep going All right, through pass so after pass. So we have the email going out and we're gonna be narrating some stuff. So here's what we have in front of us. We have this, um, resize this. We have this window here where we are speaking out our book. Let me make sure this other screen's good. All right, so uh, this, this program in front of us is called Audacity Recorder. This microphone in front of us, let's just say it's a Blue Yeti microphone. It's uh, like a Samsung something, but same difference. It's a $100-ish studio condenser mic. And I might be messing up my terms there. But anyway, we're recording in Audacity, which can process into special Amazon standards. And if you haven't grabbed this book yet, once again, the URL for that is www.hwbook.com. And it t tells you what you need to know about getting your book online. Surprisingly, all Amazon needs to know as far as your book is they want a Word document that contains the inside. They want your cover your cover and that's about it so your front cover can be a graphic your back cover can be just you paste your bio and fill stuff in and that gives you a book and you, there's a few little nooks and crannies like you enter the title of your book your name as the author the listing on amazon all that fun stuff but not a lot to it and then likewise when you narrate an audiobook they want uh, it's they want like a square cover kind of like a like a cd cover and they want some audio files specially formatted. So half the battle with Amazon, maybe even 80, 90% of the battle, is just processing, processing things up to their standards. And that's just a matter of contacting someone who knows what they're doing, who can have it in the right shape, the right format, the right size, all that fun stuff, and conform to Amazon's standards. And so here's what we're going to bring up here. We're gonna bring up, if we can get everything all set up so we're going to if this is uh working out here let's see we have in one window we have the script my book i'm reading you see that i'm on page 115 of 130 so i think i've narrated close to two hours at this point and i have about maybe 20 minutes left. And the beauty of narrating is that you don't have to do it all in one go. You can do it in little pieces. I'm just going until I get called for dinner, so we might be uh, not hanging out for too long, but basically, I'm just going to be narrating my book, and if I, get, if I catch a quick uh, typo or something, I'm going to be fixing it. And throughout the day today, I've noticed like little things where I'm like, I'll delete that sentence, I'll add that paragraph, but I definitely have not spent tons of hours on things, just little little tweaks, right? Little 30 second, 60 second changes. And so for example, one thing I've been making sure to do in this whole pass of my book is whenever I mention why, what, how to, or what if, I bold it and I noticed that previously when I had just written the book on my cell phone using Google Docs, I was not consistent. Sometimes I'd have quotes around these things like why or what, I'd have italics, and I made sure to make it bolded. And so I'm gonna be narrating this and I'm going to be seeing uh, just what, 
what little things can we pick up? And so we have our Audacity recorder. We have all these different tracks, and I'm not going to get into all this, but we have different tracks for the credits, the chapters, the preface, the introduction, and we've narrated seven chapters. Now we're going to narrate the eighth and final chapter, which is called Videos, Podcasts, and Courses. And here we go. Again, we might only be hanging out for a few minutes. Uh, I just want to show you that it's a really good idea for you to, number one, have a book, and we can show you how to do that at our course, makeaproduct.com. And it's also an even better idea for you to have an audiobook. And we don't have audiobook training, but if you want to meet with us one on one, we can meet with you and figure out your needs and either get you set up to narrate your book, or we can hire someone for a super cheap, for way cheaper than you think, to speak out your whole book. But uh, I'm showing you my process here where I'm speaking out my book and I'm going to be fixing a few little nooks and crannies here and there. So let me make sure I'm uh, hydrated. And we'll hang out for just a few minutes so you can get the idea of me narrating and catching a few little things here and there. Here we go. Actually, before we start, I'm going to put throw some text. Oh, yeah, we got some text. So reading the WWHW audiobook. All right. So here we go. Chapter 8, WWHW for videos, podcasts, and courses. Do you have any excuse to be starved for content ever again? Writer's block, speaking into a camera, explaining a process to someone, only if you intentionally self-sabotage. When all else fails, fall back onto the why, what, how to, what if formula to buy yourself some time. I first stumbled upon this concept when YouTube was fairly new and so was content marketing. I wanted to click the record button and speak on the spot, but I found myself getting stuck halfway, or worse, wondering if I'd rambled on for too long without a coherent point. The crude solution at the time was to think of three letters, the rule of threes. This was my thought process. So I'm stopping the recording because I want to bold this. And I want to see, okay, I wasn't sure if this was bullet points, but we have bullet points, so I'll keep going. This is my thought process. I'm recording a video explaining how to take massive imperfect action. I'll think of three subtopics. Subtopic number one, set milestones instead of five-year goals. Letter M for milestones. Subtopic number two, take some amount of action every day, even if it's only five minutes. Letter A for actions. Subtopic number three, get the results of those actions to a shippable or completed stage as fast as possible. C for completed. I'd only have to remember the letters M, A, C to cue myself about those three points. And we'll stop again because we noticed that this bullet point is in sentence case. We want to fix that. So, we're, I mean, we're, we're totally being picky here. We're being picky, but quick. We're fixing the, the small, tiny nooks and crannies. Moving right along. That simple technique alone helped me to be more well-spoken, but I found myself falling into the trap I mentioned earlier of simply speaking out a list. Stop again, but not for too long, because I noticed that as I, as I spoke it, I said I, not I, so I'll make it more speaky, uh, speaky and I'll say speaking out a list in quotes. All right. No context, no emotions, no relatability, no fun. Only the facts. Although using three letters to represent three talking points was fun, I later realized that WWHW was far superior, and those MAC three points belonged in the how-to or problem-solving action of my video. Okay, so I meant, I think I typed this on the phone, I meant to say section. We'll say problem-solving, we'll hyphenate that and we'll bold the how-to so that way we have consistent formatting. All right, so let me see where we left off here. We'll say, and those MAC three points belong, and those. And those MAC three points belonged in the how-to or problem-solving section of my video. I don't like to overuse quotes too much, but I did like having quotes on that. Moving right along. 
A better structure. Why is it so important to take massive imperfect action? Can I relate to burnout, disappointment from lack of results, or the guilt from not doing enough? What key components should be in place that most people are missing, such as accountability, deadlines, and a quiet, focused location? How do milestones, daily action, and completion help me take consistent action? What if I take consistent action? What next step should I take? Or even better, what website address should I visit in order to get more information? The above is fleshed out just enough to deliver something impactful in a short amount of time, and it's a formula you'll begin to see everywhere in your daily life. Again, being a little picky, we'll make this you will, because just, uh, I I'll leave most contractions in, but sometimes when it, when it just sounds weird, I'll take it out. So let's see, say, and it's a formula. Sure, we'll be even more picky. We'll say, and it is a formula. All right. Um, and it is a formula you will begin to see everywhere in your daily life. Example, you hear an ad on the radio while you're driving. Whether it's an advertisement for MyPillow, Motel 6, or a weight loss system, it's positioned as WWHW. Why should I listen to this message? The attention getter. What problem are you setting up? Interest builder. How will you solve it? Desire. What if I take the action of visiting that website or calling a phone number? Action. And then we'll just make sure to bold the, whoops, bold why, what, how, and what if. Moving right along. And by the way, quick commercial break for those watching. The place to get this book is www.hwbook.com. I think we've sold 815 copies or so, so far. I don't have the exact number, actually. You know what? We'll take a break and we'll have a quick look because I am genuinely curious about how this is selling. So we'll look at our reports. We'll sign in. Go to the reports beta. We'll narrow down, so we'll view sales, narrow down by just WWHW. So in the past month, we have sold, so not eight, I think we sold more in the last 90 days. Okay, so there we go. So total, uh, we have sold 699 copies, so not a lot, but if you want to be number 700, then the place to go is www.hwbook.com to figure out what you need to know to make any YouTube video creation, Facebook live streaming, blog posting, article writing, book writing, any of that stuff, a complete and total breeze, 699 copies sold. Not a ton, but you see that we're selling consistently. Slow and steady wins the race. So wanted to take a quick break there and see how that was going before continuing on here. Calling a phone number, action. All right, so now we're just on this new page. So yeah, we're almost done. And sometimes it's a lot of fun by breaking things up and Facebook live streaming. I mean, what if you personally, Facebook, what if you first of all had a book, but you also personally Facebook live streamed you narrating your book, that would generate some buzz, right? And that would be fun. That would be a new way to connect with people. Sure, it would be putting yourself out there bare, putting your your uh, yourself unfiltered on the line. But, you know, who cares? That's, that's one of the toughest things to get over, I think, is just being your real self and uh, being being who you are right there on screen. So we'll, um, we'll go for a few more minutes. As you see, we're now on page 118 of 130, and we're just fixing one or two things we see per page. We're not getting ourselves completely derailed, but just fixing the, the final touches, the final nooks and crannies, so that way we feel more confident about mailing a bunch of copies to different people that we might want to be on podcasts or stages we might want to speak on. I mean, what if you looked up even 10 or 20 events happening this year? and you looked up some of these events that need speakers, why not have a, not even a, a long book, but a quick book where you would say, well, you know, I speak on these subjects, here's my book about it, I'll just speak about what's in my book. 
Now you'll be more confident about sending that out because you'll know now it's free of errors. Plus bonus, you get an audiobook for this. And also, I've also noticed from speaking this out today that I've had a few just breakthroughs about some of those hidden messages that are in this book. So in this book in particular, something that kept kept creeping in was the idea that I was worried that I, I sounded dumb and I was also maybe overcompensating when I was younger to seem smart by talking really fast and by like dropping in 10 tips or 10 steps in two minutes. And uh, so that's a thing that when I hop on other people's podcasts, OPP, in the future to promote this book, which is people's way into my funnel, I'm going to be mentioning that concept a few times now that I've noticed it as a pattern in this book. The concept of, number one, being worried about coming off stupid, and number two, overcompensating and trying really hard to try to seem smart and appearing even stupider. So, I mean, that'll be funny because it'll be a little bit of self-deprecation, falling on my own sword, making fun of myself, but also in a way that's relatable to some of these listeners. So this way, it's not just, here's your book on how to how to write your speech. Here's a book on how to write your blog post. I'm talking about real emotional stuff. Anyway, moving right along, just a couple more pages, then I'll sign off and let you get to whatever you're doing on a Sunday night. So here we go. Let me get a Another drink of water here. And by the way, I have uh, our our graphics person working on a cover for this these last few days. And so all I have to do is just get the audio done and I'll just uh, fill out Amazon's special form at acx.com and have this plugged into yet another marketplace. So here we go. I use the WWHW formula every time I record an iTunes podcast, online radio show episode. So now iTunes is called Apple Podcasts. So there we go, iTunes Apple Podcast. Again, we're we're going we're, we're purposefully being nitpicky in this. Let's see. I use the All right. So we'll back up on this. I use the WWHW formula every time I record an iTunes Apple podcast, online radio show episode. I begin with the problem that led to the person to listening to that episode. All right, so see how we catch some little things. Led to the person listening to that episode. Let's see. I begin with the... I begin with the problem that led the person listening to that episode. Ooh, see, it's even the person to listen to that episode. Way less awkward. I begin with... I begin with the problem that led the person to listen to that episode. I explain the what concepts to catch the person up and give context, then dive into how to solve that problem. I end with the what if section. After getting this information, what are the next steps? What website should you visit to get more information? Online courses. I make most of my money from digital online courses. So what I want to do here is say, um, I get most of my traffic from my, from podcasting, but so now that's a better transition that we just threw in there. Online courses. Online courses. I get most of my traffic from podcasting, but I make most of my money from digital online courses, membership sites. You may know someone who has earned an online degree or perhaps learned something from a website such as Udemy or Lynda. If you have the ability to teach just one person about weight loss, real estate, the stock market, etc. to get your own piece of the digital course pie, you may have become intrigued about the possibilities of teaching once and getting paid again and again, but were discouraged about the finer details. See, sometimes we can correct on the fly. Here we go. This may be too technical, but here's the process I fall back on when creating a course that solves a problem. What problem does my course solve? What is the end result? What tangible thing will my student have created? Not just learned, but created within 30 days. 
what are four milestones, modules, or lessons that get someone from point A, having nothing, to point B? Results, lost weight, renting a home, etc. one week at a time. My template for those four weekly modules adding up to a 30-day course. Week 1, deliver a quick win. Week 2, deliver the exciting result they want. Week 3, sneak in what they really need. Week 4, case studies and loose ends. When planning a 60 to 90 minute module, I use why, what, how to, what if to plan, why are we here? What problem are we about to solve? What steps will we take to solve the problem? Then, how to solve that problem in exact step-by-step -step detail. Finally, what if you apply that material? What's a quick homework assignment or challenge that gets you started? And again, you see this, see this sentence here? Uh, let's get this just right. So uh, when you write, they're like because your brain, I mean, at least my brain, like it works too fast for its own good. Not that it's a, I'm not bragging, but I skip over stuff, right? I miss things. So we see that we have this sentence where this made sense just typing it on the phone, but what's a quick homework assignment or challenge that, that gets you started? And then here's what happens too is now this pushed some text down to the next page. So now we need to trim a little bit to get that text up. Does that make sense? So we'll say when planning a 60 to 90 minute module, we'll bold those. Uh, what problem? And you, there's. It's always possible to trim. It's always possible to take a word or two out. Um, how to solve that problem in step by step detail. And there we go. That's the master at work. And then the next thing, and this is getting too geeky, but we always want to start our chapter titles in an odd numbered page. Here's what I mean. Is well, here's my table of contents for this book. And you notice that every chapter starts on a 1, an 11, 23. See how these are all odd numbers. There's no 52. There's no 26. It's always an odd number. Now, why is that? Because when we start here, check out both sides of this page, right? When we start on an odd numbered page, we, we start on the right side. And that's how books are. You never see a book start a chapter on the left side. It always starts on this right side. So anyway, that's just a, a quick uh, tweak there. So say, having said that, we see that because we've edited, changed things, now this conclusion chapter starts at 114. We want it to start on an odd numbered chapter. We want to push it one down. So what we do is we go to this header, we do a control enter for a page break, and now conclusion starts at page 115. And then we scroll up. And then we go to our table of contents here. We right click, update field, update entire table. Hope it doesn't mess up the formatting. Uh, I think we're all good. And then we just take a quick look and make sure that every chapter with all of our changes still starts on an odd number. Uh, each of these numbers needs to end in a one, three, five, seven, or nine, right? If it ends in a two, four, six, or eight, that's not good. That means that the chapter is going to start on the wrong side. And so it looks like everything's still good. And now we are just on the final home stretch for a conclusion who and where. So, I mean, I guess, you know, if, if you don't want to be here, you're always free to, free to leave. Uh, but we're going to, let's see. Yeah, we'll knock out, we'll knock out this last chapter. And uh, something else I want to notice before we uh, get back into the, in the groove here, back into the driver's seat, is that uh, you can always add the fanciness later. So this is something, so this is a graphic here that uh, that I have, I had a graphics person uh, just create these different diagrams. So I created uh, these different doodles in my notebook and we hired someone and I said things like, well, here's a doodle on paper. I took a picture with my phone and I said, based on this doodle, go ahead and make uh, a graphic. And that's what this person's done. But the the pictures, the graphics, the diagrams in your book, those are, those are like the, the last thing you should do, right? That's like adding a, a review to your book. And speaking of, we're all over the place tonight. But uh, 
you can go to www.book.com slash Amazon to grab this book. And we have two reviews. And I emailed my list a few times saying, please leave a review. I recorded a thank you video for uh, the one review so far. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take this review and we'll put it right back into the book. So you should be taking the people that review your book and then put those reviews right back there into your book. And I think uh, for now, for now I'll just toss it on the bottom of this free gift, but eventually I wanna have a whole page that's like review, 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 like maybe like four or five. But for now, under this free gift, we'll just paste, well, I'm gonna regret that. <laughs> we'll take normal size text, we'll paste this in, and we'll say there's um hmm so yeah we'll bump up the free gift page and you know honestly i wish that someone out there had shown me that you can edit your book as you go because if someone had shown me that i would have had way less hesitation about putting my book out there, and I hope that the same is true with you. Just seeing how we can haphazardly put out a book, publish it, edit it, republish it, add a review, publish it, add graphics, republish it. Um, so we'll say, fix his hyphenation. So, um, and we'll maybe make it a little more readable. Having the complete picture. All right. So yeah, for now, it would look weird if we had just one review on one page. So I'm just stashing it here under the free gifts. Oops, um, there we go. Free gift, Bacon. oh shoot, I think we didn't want to do that, did we? So this is add, so add, make sure the table of contents didn't add that in. All right, everything's still an odd number. So yeah, so now we have, uh, we're just doing some baby steps here, right? So now we have this review by Stephen F. Brown. We get a couple more reviews like that and we'll have a, a page uh, just when we first open the book. And then something else that comes to mind here is I also want to add like a, a cheat sheet on the very front of the book. So let's think about this. So we have, we open the book there's the cover and then there's the table of contents and then there's the free gift page so maybe before the free gift page um we'll say this might be binding up more than i can shoot sheet sheets and uh, I guess we'll see that for later because for some reason we're having some weird stuff with these headers. See how like there's a header there but not there. So let me just undo. Yeah, why don't we have a header at all? All right, let me undo a few things. Let's try to get those that header back. Control Z, Control Z. All right, so now I'm checking to see. All right, so that, that free gift page didn't even have a header, so I'll redo, which is control Y, all the way back to the current version. All right, so we'll say WWHW cheat sheet. So open the book, it's just the graphic, and then a blank page, again, table of contents, and a blank page and then WWHW cheat sheet, and then a blank page, and then the free gift. So let's see here, I'll say, and why is there a free gift? And then a blank page. 
then the preface. And for some reason, okay, so then that's heading one. Now the preface is back. WHW cheat sheet. Now the table of contents is weird. I don't even know how that happens. This book publishing stuff is a lot of trial and error, isn't it? So maybe if we make this a nine point font. Yeah, just why is this suddenly? All right, S screw it. We'll deal with it later. But I, I do want to have a, a one page cheat sheet when you first open the book. But because of all those headaches that seem to add for us, there we go. So. That's a happy medium, right? We have the table of contents all on one page. Nothing's hanging off. Nothing's too weird with the headers. So open up the book. There's the light bulb logo. Turn the page, table of contents, turn the page, free gift, turn the page, and the book begins. Ah, jeez. Is it gonna work? Is that gonna mess us? Ah. Adding in that dang quotation. Let's try again. All right, so the table of contents just barely stayed on the page. We've got our free gift, we've got our preface, we have no extra pages, it's just the cover, flip page, table of contents, flip page, free gift, flip page, preface. And we'll figure out that cheat sheet later. And we'll get to um, the conclusion. So just seven pages and about the author and leave the quick review. And you see how this last page here is huge font? That's what I want to have for like the, the cheat sheet of the why, what, how to, what if. So someone can open up that front page of the book and see it all in one place. That's the dream. But we'll, we'll do that the next round of edits. Let's not let some of these things hold us up. So we'll zoom in enough to see it all on one page and we'll get to that conclusion and wrap this up. And thanks for sticking around so far on our live stream. So we're gonna create a new track here called Chapter Nine Conclusion. And you might have noticed that I do a lot of the hand gestures. I really recommend you do that. It'll help you so much with your narrating. It's the weirdest thing. It kind of helps you stay anchored, grounded, hamming it up, uh, being like William Shatner. So here we go. Conclusion, who and where? I have an honest question for you. Who cares? Does anyone care how many hours you put into creating your website? How many impressive degrees you have? or how many years you've been in business, do they care about your logo? Probably not. Two final questions to ponder as you refine your message and promote your cause. Who are the people you want to talk to and where are they? And again, we'll bold things and we'll bold things. Once again, commercial break for those watching. WWHW book is the place to grab this thing, uh, and uh, we've hold, sold 699 copies, B number 700, leave us a review, we'd love it. I'll mention you on video if I can see you on the precise Amazon page exactly. So if you're on this page, it's really important. Don't, I mean, if you wanna email me and say how much you love the book, great. But also, if, if you do, I'm gonna say, go to Amazon and leave a review. Leave a review on Amazon exactly, and I'll record a video personally saying thank you because, I mean, even 20 reviews on a book, even 40 reviews is huge. That's really hard to come by, especially in this day and age of people lurking and just clicking the like button. So if you leave an Amazon review, I will record a video for you. And what I'll show you for that is, um, like you can go to my, my page here and look at some of these books like double agent marketing like i've got 30 reviews like those were hard earned reviews and if you see a book with 30 reviews you're like okay that's at least somewhat solid if it's in the hundreds that means it's a nationally sold bestseller in bookstores but if you have at least five or ten reviews that's ahead of most people out there anyways 
let's uh, finish this conclusion. What do we got? And where are they? And where are they? Consider the YouTube channel filled with hundreds of videos that show zero views, zero views, zero views versus the person who hangs out on forums and Facebook groups or networks in offline masterminds, listens to what people say and delivers a solution. It's easy to fall into the trap of keeping up with the Joneses. You have that competitor who gets under your skin because they seem to have their marketing dialed in. A beautiful website and established social media presence. Paid ads that follow you around the internet. Instead of simply cloning, one-upping, me-tooing, and drawing attention to them, do this. Become a customer of that competitor. Use their training or their software, not for the express purposes of copying, but to find the flaw. Blue Ocean Strategy Discover where it falls short, get frustrated, and create a better, perhaps even unrelated, paradigm-shifting, non-competing solution. The problem with following your competitors is that you compete in what's called a red ocean, as explained by W. Chan Kim. It's crowded and cutthroat with already established rules. It's better to create something new in a blue ocean where there is more opportunity and less competition. Think about how revolutionary Uber was compared to taxis, or how the iPad was marketed as a simpler alternative to laptops. I began my career in an industry where the average person marketed a $7 ebook that taught others how to make money selling $7 ebooks. Again, the nooks and crannies, the fine tuning, markets, I changed tense mid sentence that taught others instead of being like everyone else. I created and sold web page creation software, templates, and tools for that crowd of people to set up websites, membership sites, and podcasts. Another niche we market to, voiceover artists. People who have been passed over by the voice acting establishment and want to generate their own income by using freelancer sites, Fiverr, Upwork, Audible, to work their own hours. And then in the fine tuning, we'll say establishment because we we mean that like uh, like they're bad. Okay, so let me make sure work audible to work their own. Wait for the fire truck to finish leaving. Actually, while waiting for the fire truck, let's. Let's check some Facebook comments. See who's watching, see who's listening, and then we'll uh, finish this up here. Making sure, all right, making sure I'm unmuted. Check the live stream. It's taking forever, that's okay though. All right, so live stream is working, and we're just gonna we've been streaming for forty minutes, so we'll uh, we'll just um, do a little bit more and wrap things up here because we're almost at the end, and we don't have to work be here on camera the whole time, to work right? Work their own hours. Work their own hours. Meanwhile, those competing still oh yes, those still competing. Meanwhile, meanwhile, those still competing in the Red Ocean are voiceover artists not making money, trying to sell coaching services to other voiceover artists not making money. One of our favorite clients, Dr. Charles Runnels, invented a PRP, platelet-rich plasma procedure called the Vampire Facelift, a new way to restore color and youthful appearance to one's face. 
He markets this procedure to other doctors to provide a needed high-ticket service and escape the rat race of struggling to run a medical practice. And help them. He markets this procedure to other doctors to provide... He markets this procedure to other doctors... markets this procedure... He markets this procedure to other doctors to provide a needed high-ticket service and help them escape the rat race of struggling to run a medical practice. I mention these examples to you to tell you to decide who you are speaking to and where they hang out. If your podcast episodes drone on for too long with no real point, or you're stuck with writer's block, then chances are you aren't writing to a person. Your who does not exist. You're trying to please everyone. It isn't clear if you're showing off to your competitors, bad, or your prospects, good. Alright, so we'll fix the bold issue. Bold issue. And the bold issue. Alright. Communicate to one person. Early on, I struggled with writing. It took me weeks to crank out one single email to promote my business. I wasn't building a list, and it took months to create a short article or blog post. I practiced... Ooh, one second. Drink a water time. Until I strengthened my writing muscle. All right. I practiced perfect. I practiced repeated until I strengthened my writing muscle and I applied the WWH Fubby. Jeez. All right, one second. I practiced. I practiced, repeated, until I strengthened my writing muscle and I applied the WWHW formula in order to write quickly. Writing quickly added enthusiasm and allowed me to crank out content on a massive scale. This evolved into my habit of broadcasting to my email list every day. When I contacted my subscribers daily, I made more money. Imagine that. However, I lacked traffic. I partnered with Lance Tomashiro from Lehigh, Utah, just outside of Salt Lake City, who I consider to be the smartest internet marketer on the planet. Lance's wife Marty visited my websites and subscribed to my email subscriber list to find out what this strange red-headed guy Robert Plank from Turlock, California, two hours east of San Francisco, was all about. One day, Lance noticed his wife sitting at the laptop, deeply focused, rapidly typing a message. He asked, what are you writing? Her response, your new business partner Robert Plank emailed me and I'm replying. Lance looked at the screen. It was a broadcast email that I had sent to 40,000 plus subscribers. It even had an unsubscribe link at the bottom, but Marty thought the message had been sent directly to her because I kept one person in mind with a specific need when writing. Don't worry about a niche. Don't concern yourself with multiple customer avatars if that thinking only complicates things. Don't think about how much time, work, writing, proofreading, editing, and reworking you'll have to do. Instead, keep that person in mind. The best kind of writing, speaking, or video creation you'll ever create is a letter to an old friend that helps solve their problem in an easy and timely fashion. That's it. All right, so we have a, a couple of final pages to do, but I think that that, that little story, that little anecdote about uh, Lance's wife getting an email from me, which was a broadcast, and she didn't realize it, and she was typing a whole page, I think that's a funny place to end up. So I hope you have a, a great last few hours of your weekend. I hope you make this next week the, the best week you've ever had. And if you want a, a fun book, a fun read, and soon to be an audiobook, Go to www.hwbook.com. It's my new book. It's the simplest book I've ever made, and I think it's the best one I've ever made. So let me know what you think. Grab it, leave a review. It's only 99 cents. What else do you have to lose? I mean, come on, it's it's a buck. So www.hwbook.com. 
Plank.com is the place to go. Robert Plank, thanks for hanging on this live stream with me for about 45 minutes. I uh, had fun, got a little bit done. And I mean, a, a really gentle suggestion for you is what if you live stream you doing your work, doing your uniqueness, doing the thing that you do best? What if you live streamed it? Just a thought. Keep that in mind. Robert Plank.